It's lovely to have you with us. Hello, hello from Bononi, which is where I am sitting in my kitchen. You've got to love being able to work remotely and the wonders of technology. When it works, it's great. And now it's working. So we can welcome you to this, another edition of the Coaching Hour podcast. Lovely to have you here. I'm Paul Rotherham. This program brought to you proudly in partnership with Coaches Network South Africa. I'm joined, as always, by my two lovely sidekicks, Mareka and Mary. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. All well, your side ladies? Perfect. Fantastic. Everything's going well. Good. I won't dwell on it, but I got into a bit of trouble a few minutes ago because I noticed that our guest has had a haircut, his summer cut, as he calls it, Falk Winter. It is the German Schnauzer summer cut. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I'm in a bit of trouble because I didn't notice that the ladies have also had their hair done. I'm feeling left out here today. Well done. You're looking lovely as always. Thank you for going to the extra trouble of looking good for the coaching hour. <laughs> oh, it's just a pleasure for you, Paul. And next week, I want to see something different from your side. I don't know why. <laughs> mm, I'm growing a fringe. So my hairline is receding. So I figured if it gets a bit longer on the top, it'll be better. Anyway, you're not here to hear about our hair. You are here to hear from our expert who joins us for the third session now. We've been talking about productivity, about being efficient, basically, uh, getting things done, making better use of time. And I think this is a topic that we can really plug into all areas of our life, whether it's our personal life, work, social, being active and healthy, whatever it might be. Uh, we've picked up some wonderful tips from Falk. And Mareka, Falk returns again today. Uh, you got to introduce today's topic. Good, yes. Yeah. So we're talking again with Falk Winter today. And today we're going to actually touch on procrastination, which is a very important topic. So we're going to talk about how to get rid of your energy vampires and postpone procrastination. Now, before we get into it, Falk, I just want to give some positive feedback. Last, um, last session, we spoke about habits. And I'm very happy to report that I've started exercising every morning. I put my exercise clothes out every evening so it's ready so I do that I got my water bottle I'm drinking more water so Mary and what about you I just want to quickly check in with your water well yes I've been drinking water every day I've got it by my side I didn't have bring it here now this morning because I'm drinking coffee and what I did do I started brain gym oh so yeah. there's a there's a whole course on brain gym, which is very exciting. <laughs> and, no, you know, that is a, another avenue okay. of getting your brain to work in coherence each side. You know, the left, left and right to be in coherence, which gives you a much better focus ability. And so I've started that. I, can Good, I also you. do that. Um, I do the super brain yoga now in between clients. So yeah, Falk, I don't know what you did right, but you did something in the last session because I've started, you know, doing a few things and creating a new habits, which I just need to obviously continue doing. Wow, well done, ladies. I'm glad to hear that's all about you know, turning knowledge into action and then action into habits. That's what's all about. And that's what you're mm -hmm. talking about in this uh, course here. Also, you know, uh, you're looking very nice, very pretty. As I said, I'm the German schnauzer, as Paul said, so I really feel a little bit. But it's about time to get summer. It's a sunny day here in Cape Town. It's beautiful. So let's jump right into our topics for today. You know, get rid of uh, energy vampires and how to postpone procrastination. Let's share the screen. We go into it. But this is a topic which affects all of us more or less. We're running into it, if it's not on a daily basis, but uh, quite frequently sometimes. So let's get this running here. Remember, I love the way you present. A, so a short, a short recap. Sorry, Mary, what do you say? I said your presentation is so flavorable, if that's a good word to say, because it, it just uh, it's just like compelling you to look. I love the colors. I'm glad to hear, you know, this is when we respond with our senses. Guys, the productivity toolkit, remember, there were 12 strategies. We just pick a, a couple of them and talk about them. We started with the power tower. Remember, you choose the activity, imperative, important. We went to the habits that what uh, 
what you mentioned, Mary, with the brain gym and Mariah, with going to the gym, actually, you know, how to make it obvious, attractive, easy, and enjoyable. And remember, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your habits. There's nothing more important than choosing one or two activities and install them as daily routines. And once you, you miss your brain gym or you miss your daily exercise, Mariah, that means you have achieved the status of, okay, it's a habit now. And this is as long as you have to go for it. And I really encourage anybody who has not exercised, especially as a habit, to pick this up as one of the first ones. Because how we feel in our body, how we move our body, influences everything else. Now, energy vampire. I love this vampire stuff. Because I love castles. When I was in Germany recently, went to a very old castle, almost forgotten. Beautiful. You could almost feel the energy and the vampires around. There were some, some puppets there from some movies they shot in this place. So just amazing. Guys, energy vampires. What it is, you have to be aware first, as always. You know, you have to be aware what drains your energy. What is it? And it's very simple, actually. There are only two things which drain our energy. What do you think? What is it? Two things, <laughs> train our energy. Any, any, any idea? Well, they complain. Emotion or... oh. So again, Mary? People who complain and talk about all their bads and, and their problems and, you know, they, they just present themselves as victims. Absolutely. So what is people? Oh, lots of people. And the second one could be, what is people? And the second one? Our thoughts. Yeah, it's a, oh, that's a good one too. That's something internally, big time, not a monkey mind, Paul, as you said. And then as you mentioned this morning, when we have traveled with, you know, whatever, electronics, IT systems, the neighbors just start drilling. When you have your Zoom session, situations, huh? our environment, situations, they can also drain our energy, noise, huh? noise, traffic jams, you know, all this kind of stuff. So either people or situations. So you have to be aware of this, what drains your energy. Listen to your body, you know, go into yourself, find out what's draining my energy. Because once you're aware, I think I mentioned it before, you're already 50% one. Being awareness is first. And now, of course, we have to find out ways how to avoid it or way out of it. And uh, sometimes you cannot avoid it. And there's no way out of it what to do in these circumstances okay and as i've written down here at the, at the bottom guys you cannot control situations people and that's a very big statement but you can always control or influence your response to them in life you know that's the ultimate freedom and almost the only freedom we have we don't know what happens in our life we have no control about outer things i'm sure we all have heard change is the only constant we have and that's true everything changes all the time so the good news is if something bad happens or you're in a bad situation in life, you can be sure it's going to change. On the same way, of course, is if something good happens in your life, you can be sure too it's going to change. <laughs> That's why I enjoy it. Huh? Don't, don't fret. What we do in good situations very often, we are not even be able to enjoy it so much anymore because we think about, oh, it's not going to last. Something's going to happen. And it will happen anyway. So enjoy the good times. They will change. Don't be too concerned about the bad times they will change as well. There is light at the end of the tunnel, the same when it comes to energy vampires. So we cannot control the things outside of us. We really cannot. It seems like we cannot change people. People always trying, it's not possible. But we can always control our response to what happens. And that's a big freedom. That's a big, big power we have as human beings, okay? So people, huh? People, big one, biggest source. We call this communication, eh? Mary, what you said. Whining, complaining, gossiping, sharing news. Oh, here in South Africa, there are tons of, of bad news, like almost every country, depending on what side you look on. Eh? The traffic and the load shedding and, and the crime and the weather and what happened here and there. Ah, just turn on the news in the morning. Eh? Or better, don't do it. Or grab your phone in the morning. So we call it communication. Or have you ever noticed when you're together, socializing in groups, having a braai or online or having a chat. We're talking about other people. I don't know why, but we talk about other people all the time. And when you, when you look deeper, when we talk about other people, what do we mostly talk about? Is it that we praise them all the time, that we 
want to emulate them because they're so successful, they have great ideas. No, it's not. We complain or we whine or we are jealous at least, not a little bit, or we are sarcastic. So it's a big source which trades our energy and we're not even aware of it. We are not There's even a quote, aware. I think, a brilliant quote, Falk. Uh, I seem to recall it came from Eleanor Roosevelt. I don't know if, if you remember the quote where it's along the lines of great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, and small minds discuss people. I love it, Paul. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. Great people discuss ideas, projects, plans, dreams, enterprises, you know, whatever they are going to do. But not many people do this. It's really more about people <laughs> or illnesses huh? the older you get people love about illnesses and the latest doctor visits or of course the, the youngsters these days unfortunately too much influenced by social media what's in what's out you don't use emojis anymore you have to have these sneakers these days definitely and you have to travel to this location and the latest raving party is over there nothing wrong with this but if this is 100 percent of your you know communication content then maybe you have to think about it good so what is the way out of it? Communicate clearly how you feel, how you're affected and what do you expect? This is a, uh, some useful advice, guys, even in a relationship. You know, when you tell your hobby, you know what? I always do the dishes. You never help me. You watch rugby on TV. You should help me. And you know, then the argument starts Then the fighting starts. So don't generalize and, and don't judge and don't just, you know, um, make it on an intellectual level. You're never going to fight when you just express how you feel. When you say, Harvey, you know what? I feel a little bit tired as well. You know, I did the dishes again. So it just makes me a little bit tired. Nothing else. There is no fight. Huh? There is no judge. There is it's just a statement how you feel. And it's a good start of our communication. You know, turn it into a positive, you know? And then, of course, clearly communicate. And we can go about communication next time, maybe a little bit. You know, what you expect from the other person. Guys, communication, especially when it comes with people and also in emails, there are only two reasons of communication. And many people, I would say they have this vision thinking, you know, blah, 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 blah. There are only two reasons. Tell me what you want me to know or tell me what you want me to do. That's it. And we should start this with even a negative situation or negative people. Okay, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to do? There's nothing else. The rest is blah, blah, and very often negative. So come down to the fact, you know, this is about communication. And then of course, uh, I mean, even in my own example, I call certain family members back in Germany or so on. And after five minutes of whining and complaining, I have to listen to, I say, okay, what are you looking forward to? To do on the weekends? What are you excited about, you know, doing in uh, August? Because you have to turn the communication around. Or I say, I'm sorry, I have another call on, bye-bye, uh, I call you next month again. You have to remove yourself, huh, guys, even from your mother-in-law, you know, or from your, you know, hopefully not your spouse or your partner, but, you know, you have to remove yourself <laughs> because it drains you. There's nothing good in it. Yeah, but, you know, I have to listen. I have to show empathy. No, all bullshit. You know, other, other people dump their emotional garbage onto you. Don't be available. Don't be available. It's nothing to do with sympathy or empathy. You know, the other person feels better because dumping our negativity on someone releases them from us. But this is not fair. The other person has to take it on. Don't be the, the, the garbage bin for, for negative people. Okay. So On that note, Falk, we had a wonderful session. Uh, it was also a four-week session with a coach by the name of Sean Kritzinger. And one of the things that Sean did without in any way uh, stepping off the road that you're on this morning, what Sean did is he went into uh, great detail on the various personality types and what you've said now about the communication basics being tell me what what i can do or, or what you want me to know i think it's interesting though to keep in mind that our different personality types have very different ways of communicating those wants and needs so as you've said now you might spend some time on the phone with your family and it could take them 10 or 15 minutes to get to the point of why they called. And a lot of that, I think, based on what we learned from Sean, comes down to personality type, where another family member could phone you and they don't even ask how you are, how your day is, how the family is. They might just jump straight in with, can I borrow your bicycle? There's, there's no fluff around it. So 
for me, yes, I, I understand that we need to try and filter out a lot of this noise, but I think we also need to keep in, in mind that people are people and they have different ways of communicating these things. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Absolutely. I have it in the communication section in the module about communication because, you know, these there are different classifications, but they're basically these four personality types. You know, some people really are down to the facts, as you know, analytical, and the opposite is totally the touchy, how it makes me feel type of person. And there are two in between. So it's good. And you should actually, and that's uh, probably what Sean did, which is very useful. You have to know, as, at least with the people you are surrounding yourself with, what type of personality they are. Because then you know, you have to start with how you're doing, how was your weekend, blah, blah, a little bit to get access to them. But with the other one, you just give them the fact and you're getting there much faster. So it's good to know at least the people in your team or in your family to know what type they are. If they are more the touchy feeling type, the, the confirmation type, or more the hard fact, you know, intellectual, get it done type. These are the two extremes. And there are, as I said, two in the middle. So this is a very valuable thing, Paul, what you said, just to know who you're talking to. Yeah? And still, it doesn't matter what personality type the other one is, you should, uh, if it's an energy vampire, um, do not, don't be available, that's it. <laughs> and if you have to be available, um, you, you use it as a practice, as I wrote here, for self-love, love for others, patience and forgiveness. You know, guys, when anything bothers us in our environment, especially when it comes to people, it means there's something within myself which has to be, I don't want to call it fixed or has to be addressed, but it's in me. It has nothing to do with the other person. It's a long topic. We could discuss it now, but just use it as self-love, patience. You know, you can tell yourself, okay, this will pass too. It's a great statement. This will pass too, like everything else. And you're calming down, coming back to the now, and maybe focus on your breath a little bit and, uh, and practice. Use it as a practice. And then one more point here to the energy vampire. The most important communication, guys, we have, never forget this, is how do you communicate to yourself? Huh? Mm. It's the most important. And unfortunately, again, unconsciously, we are not communicating very well to ourselves. We would never go up to any person and talk to her or to him in a way like we talk to ourselves very often. It comes down to you know, I'm not good enough. Oh, I messed up again. I cannot do this. I'm too old, too ugly, wrong neighborhood, no friends. It doesn't work. It never worked. Huh? It comes down to this stuff. So be very aware when you communicate to yourself in a nice, constructive, positive way. Of course, we mess up. Of course, we make mistakes. Of course, we hurt people and, and, and do things wrong. But never forget, in these instances, I always tell myself, you know what? I'm work in progress. You know, you give your best, you let it go, you learn from mistakes. We are all work in progress, okay? That's all what it is. No? Park, can I quickly touch on one of the points that you have there? Um, you know, if you are in an environment where there's negative people, like you said, you can't remove yourself, especially some corporate environments. This is now me years ago when I decided to no longer engage in those type of conversations. So in the beginning, it's, dif it's difficult. Like you said, you need to practice because you still would have those people coming to you, complaining, you know, they are still in that habit of complaining. But what I changed is instead of buying into the story and talking with them, I, I decided not to respond anymore on that. Um, so in the beginning, people need to realize it's going to feel like you don't have things to talk about because most people around you are in that habit. But what the awesome thing is because you change, you start attracting different people in your life that talk about the things that, that you would like to talk about. That's uplifting, more positive. The, the moment that you remove yourself, you no longer engage. You're still there. You can still listen. You can still be a shoulder to cry on, but you don't buy into the story. Absolutely. I love the Mariki. What you said, you don't buy into the story. That's the most important thing. That means you're not getting emotionally involved in the story because then it does damage to you as well. You know, as you said, as I just mentioned before, everything which disturbs us in our environment, people and certain situations comes back to us. So once you change yourself, as you said, you changed yourself. You didn't buy into the story. That means you raised your vibration, your frequency level, what you are operating on. So two things happen then. One thing is very often you decide, you know what? No, I look for different friends. I cut this one out or I just, you know, limit my time with them. 
or these people just fall off the radar. You attract a different kind of people, people who are vibrating on your frequency, on your vibration, on your positivity, on your constructive thoughts and projects and ideas and enthusiasm. That's just what it is. Again, it starts with, it ends with us. We become better or different. It means we attract different kind of people. So you don't have to change the world. You don't have to change other people. No, we're just doing it with ourselves and everything else will fall into place. That's, that's what it is. Beautiful uh, comment, absolutely. So, so then, can I say something too, please? Mary, um, yeah. what, what I noticed with myself is people eventually know who I am and that I don't engage in gossip and I don't, that I'm always, you know, I try my best to be positive and encouraging and inspiring. And so those people that, do, that moan and complain won't do it with me because they know that they're not going to come right with me. I'll give them something positive to think about. So you do develop a reputation amongst your family and your friends. It is, Mary. And, and I think it's a good reputation. You know, you don't keep up with the bullshit, no? So there's no time for this. Life, life is too exciting. And uh, why should we do this? No? <laughs> and it doesn't help anybody. No, I love it. Beautiful. And guys, the second one, as, as we mentioned, challenging situations. Huh? The traffic, your traffic jam is a good one. You know, if we cannot handle, you know, traffic, for instance, you know, or a traffic jam or the person cutting in front of you, if we cannot handle it, if it makes us angry or annoyed or irritated, guys, then we cannot handle people. It has nothing to do with us, whatever happens on the outside, as I mentioned, it has nothing to do with us. So we just should be able to handle it. Things are the way they are. So we have to turn, if we can remove ourselves, turn off the source, turn off the radio, you know, make it quieter. Many people, as you may know, they're not even able to, to be in a room by themselves for an hour. No phone, no radio, no TV, just being by themselves. And no book, just sitting by themselves for an hour. So they cannot do it. <laughs> you need the noise, the distraction. So just test it for yourself. Huh? So we remove ourselves or we use it as an exercise. As I said, this will pass to go deeper, go inside yourself. Being aware of what, what's getting annoyed, what part within yourself is getting annoyed. And just, you know, in our coaching, Marika, as you know, we use it, the acceptance technique. Just watch it, you know, just watch it as an, as an, you know, a neutral observer, what's going on within yourself, and you just transcend the situation. It just goes away. 10 seconds, 20 seconds, pay attention to where you feel the sensation in your body, it just goes off. So use these situations, be grateful for the situations, and maybe even for the people because they bring something out in you or make you aware of something you have to work on. It's that simple and that hard as it is, you know? And again, nobody and nothing ever has control over you unless you give it to them. It's a beautiful, it's a power, most powerful stage. Only we humans have it. Nobody and nothing ever has control over to you unless you give it to them. That means once you get emotionally involved, in the thing, and it can be real, huh? all the stuff happening on the outside, they are real, yeah, they're happening, but uh, they don't have to let you control you. That's the key out of it, um, of this stuff, getting rid of energy vampires. And then your life gets better and better. You don't have any more health issues. You have more and more energy. And the more energy you have, the more stuff you can do in life. And the more challenges you can overcome. That's all what it is. Good, we didn't want to make it too long, to be honest, but now we are already here. Let's go to the next one or any more questions to this energy vampire stuff. You okay with it? I just wanted to say that we actually self-sabotage ourselves, hey, Falk? We really do because most people choose all of these things. Nobody ever forces us to have a radio blaring in the background or to turn on the news or to watch the news or to uh, be exposed to the negativity of social media. Nobody's forcing us to do it. We become addicts. And we choose to do it. And then we complain about the fact that we feel like we do because we do it. So actually, we're all creating our own reality. And in case you missed it, I think it was in the first edition of our coaching hour with Falk, that that morning, I had actually removed Twitter or X as it's now called, thanks to Elon. I removed it from my phone. Do you know I haven't been on in, I think this is the third week now, and I do not miss it at all and at the time of having it i thought oh this is this is really cool i enjoy this it's adding some sort of value to my life but i eventually got to the point where i realized it was adding no value at all 
and I deleted it completely. And to be honest, I might actually even close my account on Twitter because I just feel so much happier not having to be exposed to all of that. And yes, to some extent, you can control the negativity in terms of who you're following on X. And, uh, but even then, I, I just find it's, it's a constant bombardment of noise that I don't need. And, and we've been raised, I think, in this modern society, we've been raised to believe that you are not who you should be or you are inadequate if you're not on top of the news, if you don't know what's happening in Russia and Ukraine, if you don't know the latest that's coming out of America, uh, if you're not aware of, of local news, society has made us believe that we will be worse off. And I think the opposite is true. I actually think we are happier by knowing less. Absolutely, Paul, 100%. 100% agree. That's all what it is. You know, and it comes down, as you said, to negative habits, to programming, conditioning by our environment, huh? To social media, I, to I opinions, and all these things. And, 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 you know, as I said, remember when we came to habits, once your habits first, they're very easy, too easy to be felt, and later too heavy chains to get rid of. So it's so hard. I mean, ask a person now, when I ask my clients, come on, should be at least one hour or two hours during every day, during waking hours, where you don't touch your phones. We cannot do it. <laughs> but as you said, getting aware, so we have to be radical. Not like I used to free the block or to block the news out because I'm still a little bit of a news junkie. Like you have it been with X on your side. So we always have to ask ourselves just how much value does it add to my life? You know, and it doesn't make me happier. And if not, don't do it. Beautiful. Love it. Mary, you were going to say something? I didn't know it was changed to X. <laughs> when did that happen? Uh, about a month ago, I'm guessing, thereabouts. Three, well, it was around the time that I cancelled it, and I didn't cancel it because of that. So I think, yeah, three weeks, probably thereabouts. Did you know, Mareka? But it's good, it's good, Mary, because it means you haven't been paying attention to the news, which is <laughs> actually healthier. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Absolutely. Guys, procrastination a little bit. Postpone procrastination. Why do we procrastinate? You know, we know these reasons here. Fear of rejection. We want to do it perfectly. That's a very German thing. It took me a while to get over this one. We want to do things perfectly, which is stupid. Just start doing them, improve along the way. That's why the Americans are so much better. I, I don't want to generalize, but they not, sometimes have no clue, but they go ahead 100%, run against the wall, change track, go the other direction. So they're so much faster implementing things while we Germans, I don't want to generalize, but want to make it perfect. Once we have it perfect, it's outdated. So that's a little bit of a problem. So find the middle way in between. Inability to focus on one thing at a time. I mean, you know, these Zoom meetings, I'm sure now whoever follows us or, or in, in Facebook and so on has at least one more thing going on. You know, at least one more thing going on. And there's nothing wrong with listening to a podcast and driving a car and doing your dishes, but having on a, a podcast or a, a Zoom meeting and having two other apps running at the same time and checking your phone, what many people do, it's not going to help, you know. And um, people think it's too hard to start. It's too hard to start. You know, they, they just don't want to do it. That's why people procrastinate. It's too difficult. So when is it okay to procrastinate? I wrote down this question here. Any idea when it's okay? There are some instances where you think, yeah, actually it's okay. There are, there are two or three, uh, two instances basically. When you think it's okay to procrastinate, what do you think? What is it? When you're unsure and there's no really strict timeline. So for instance, if I'm booking a holiday and I know that I'm booking a holiday for somewhere next year, somewhere in Europe, and I've got a couple of choices of venues that I could book. And I now I'm just mulling it over and thinking, hmm, where should I go? I don't know if that would be labeled procrastination, but I think in that instance, you know, my dad, my dad said something. He said, if in doubt, don't. And I guess in some cases that can be the very cause of problems. But in most cases, I think he was right. If, if there's any doubt, don't. And I guess it means that you're not going to be a, a, a super risk taker if you live like that. But generally, it's the safer bet. Yeah, okay. Some more opinions on this? When it's okay to procrastinate? When you don't have the tools yet. 
for example, if I, I want to knit something, I've got the pattern and I've got the idea and the intention, but I don't have the knitting needles and the wool yet. Then you just delay the, the beginning, the start of it. Yeah, absolutely. It comes close to what, what the Paul said. I would say this is just a long deadline. You know, you give yourself a deadline, you know, when you want to start or make the decision about the holiday. It's not really procrastination. It's just a longer deadline, you know. Otherwise, it is a different topic. Actually, we may discuss maybe one day when it comes to decision making, but most people don't know anymore how to do it, just to make a decision. You know, most people don't make decisions anymore, which is a very harmful thing to ourselves. But there are two instances uh, the procrastination is good. One is when we are in creative pursuits. You know, like sometimes if you write a book or, or, or three pages a day and you do your three pages, you should do it. But then let's say, oh, you have an idea. You let it sit overnight. You, you heard this before. No? Make a big decision. Let's sit it with you one night, not longer, and then make the decision. You know, this, this paintings, artists, writing music and stuff. Sometimes it's good for them. Let it sit a little bit and then they do it. It doesn't mean they have to wait for inspiration and not doing anything else in between all these weeks and months. That's not, but for creative pursuits, sometimes you, it's good to procrastinate a little bit, to go a little bit later on the whole thing. And the second thing is procrastinate. Yes, grabbing your phone, checking social media, you know, you can procrastinate for forever. It's very good. You know, that's the second instance when it's very good to procrastinate. Okay, so the effect here, okay, stress level and the quality of your time of the work, it goes down. Huh? And the, the worst thing actually here is the self-confidence goes down. Because you teach your subconscious mind, oh, you procrastinate. You said you're going to do exercise. You're not going to do it anyway. So once you teach yourself this, again, it's an unconscious thing. It sits in your system. It sits in every cell of your body. And you become unhappy. You become drained of energy again. It becomes an energy vampire, basically. So this is the effect of procrastination. And of course, you miss out on new opportunities because you haven't done the things you, you wanted to do. You said you must do, okay? And it's really not the procrastination itself, it's the addiction to it, to getting done the things, to doing the most important stuff, which is killing, okay? So, and uh, otherwise, as we know, it's not good for our health in total. That's what it is. Now, some way out of it, I put it down here, the 2.5 solution. We didn't discuss it yet. You have to plan ahead. We will discuss it next time. The one step is really make a commitment, write it down, put it in your diary, schedule out time, block out time, and do it. Break it down in smaller pieces. Huh? You have a big presentation, uh, a big interview, a big proposal. Say today, I'm going to do one page. I'm going to do 10 sentences. Very important. Get somebody who's checking on you. Did you do it? Did you do it? Did you do it? Very good. Failure-proof plan is also one of the strategies, um, how to put conditions in place which don't allow you not to do it, not to start it. You know, it comes down to the habit, remember? To the habit installing, you pay the price. If you don't do it, huh? you, you, you have to do something which you don't like to do. This is the direction of the failure-proof plan. Very important, what people very often don't do, set a time limit how much time you will do. People say, oh, once I'm in the flow, I just keep going. I was just writing this new podcast, this blog, this web page, this proposal. It was so good, I just kept going. No, don't do it. You train yourself. I committed uh, half an hour for this task. You stop after half an hour and you move to the next task. Very important, okay? Set a time limit how long you do the task. And then coming back to the why. There are many, many people out there talking about the why, why, why is so important. And it is. Ask yourself, why is it so important to call these three people now? Why is it so important to have this tough discussion with a team member you try to postpone because it's gonna be uncomfortable? Why is it so important to start your exercise now? Why is it important to get a diary and writing down the things you want to do for tomorrow? And then remember, it comes down to have it, reward yourself, huh? Yeah. You say, oh, I've done it today. It's the most difficult task. Like for me, for instance, making some calls, you know, I do it before 12 o'clock, but I want to get it done. Now nah, to get it done, okay. So let's get it done. Try, I don't like the word try. Attempt to do these things you don't want to do, you want to procrastinate. Do them before 12 o'clock. In many cases, it's possible. So it's done. And then you're, you're free. You do whatever you want to do or you have to do, but the most difficult thing is done. It's, so it's just start. The end of the day, just start. I know Mel Robinson, she has this great, I'm sure you heard about her, these three, two, one rule, like getting out of bed, nah? procrastination, getting out of bed in the morning. You just call down, three, two, one, out. There's nothing to think about. 
<laughs> you just do it. Nothing to think about. Just do it. And that's it. That's the topic for today. I mean, short and sweet. Sure. That was brilliant, Falk. I must say, I'm, I'm often left with a lot of questions, and I know we need to keep these sessions short. But sometimes you just touch on things, and I think, oh, that's cool. I'd like to find out more. And then before I know it, boom, we've moved on to the next thing. Um, that three, two, one, for instance, that sounds very interesting. Is that literally just counting in your head three, two, one, and then doing whatever it is? Like when you're a kid and you want to go for a swim and you dip your toe in the water and it's a bit cold and then you put your foot in up to your calf and it's still cold. And then your friend comes along and just goes, nah, man, and jumps in. And before you know it, he's having a great time and you're still standing on the step. That was always me because I never liked cold water. I guess the three, two, one, go doesn't even give you time to think about those things. The brain yeah. hack. Yeah. What's that, Mary? It's a brain hack. Explain. You to... So when, when you do something that you're not normally doing, so it's just hacking your brain, it's breaking the pattern of thinking. So you don't normally say three, two, one. You say one, two, three. <laughs> I don't say that either. I just, I think I'm probably in, in, in that section where I think too much about things before I do them. So when you say three, two, one, you, it just breaks the pattern of thinking. But it can be anything. It can be Joe Bloggs, here I come. <laughs> okay, like I'll remember that. If I get into trouble, it's your fault. <laughs> I'll take it on the chin. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you so much, Falk. I really, I've made a few notes here. So hopefully next week I can report on a few other positive feedback, hopefully on a few things that I'm procrastinating on, which I'm going to implement. Um, so everybody that is listening or watching and you really want to delve deep into these topics, um, Falk has a in-depth course with all the 12 strategies on how to do this, how to implement it. And obviously you can see from the little bit that he shared already that we got so much value from it. So there's a link um, in the discussion that you can follow if you want to do his um, course and also to check on the previous sessions that we had. I mean, we've got so much value and I love the way that it kind of follows on each other. And our next session, we are going to talk about um, really executing planning and making things happen. So I really look forward to that, to really, like you said, Paul, uh, not standing on the step and just doing it, jumping into the cold water, which I love that analogy. Thank you, Falk. I really enjoyed it and I look forward to the next session. Thank you, everybody. Good to see you. Thank you, Falk. And thank you for joining us for this, another edition of the Coaching Our Podcast, brought to you in partnership with Coaches Network South Africa. I'm Paul Rotherham, Mareka and Mary. Thank you. And we look forward to your company on the next one. Bye for now.